Enfold Proactive Health Trust, Creating Safe Spaces, presents Demystifying Sexuality, a video series. What we need to know about consent, presented by Deepika Bharadwaj, Content Development. There are two valuable lessons that the Me Too movement has taught us. One, that we should believe survivors and support them when they come forward. And two, we should be mindful of power dynamics in sexual relationships. Like the one between a boss and an employee, a professor and a student, or between an older and younger adult. But what about relationships where the power dynamic isn't so evident? How does that complicate our ideas of consent? And what about when a sexual encounter is consensual for all parties involved, but consent is pulled away in between? Since 2018 and the arrival of the Me Too movement in India, we have been re-examining what we understand as acceptable behaviour in the workplace and university spaces. We now realise that simply wanting to create safer spaces to express our sexuality isn't enough. We also need to understand how exactly we can do that. Our workplaces and universities can't be made safer solely by incorporating a policy that says sexual harassment won't be tolerated here. We also need to analyse the conditions that enable sexual harassment and abuse of power to occur in the first place. We can't foster consensual intimacy in our communities when we also simultaneously don't hold perpetrators accountable but rather enable them to harm others. The key to navigating all of this lies in deepening our understanding of consent, a word that I'm sure you've heard thrown around a lot in different spaces with everyone proclaiming just how much they know about consent, when in reality, we might know very little of it. We also do everyone a disservice when we say that consent is easy to define and that our definition of it is applicable to everyone in all situations. That is rarely ever true. Our understanding of consent is fairly new and we've only just begun to discuss it. But that doesn't mean we can't learn to practice it. To deepen our understanding of what consent actually is or what it looks like in practice, we can start by acknowledging that it is messy and complex. Most of us have learned our consent practices by mimicking the unsafe and non-consensual practices of adults that are normalized in a patriarchal and heteronormative culture propagated by flawed representations in advertisements, songs, movies. There's an interesting quote I came across recently which read, the longer you swim in a culture, the more invisible it becomes. Toxic ideas around consent and intimacy have become so enmeshed in our culture that we barely even notice them. Bollywood movies have been notorious for normalizing men stalking women and presenting it as romantic. Men relentlessly pursuing women despite being rejected for their advances is a common depiction. Men not taking too well to rejection is a major reason why women go along with abuse and don't leave the relationship, fearing retaliation. Men also haven't been taught to ask for consent because in our society, women have never been seen as having complete body autonomy. If they were, patriarchy would lose its social hold on us and men wouldn't be able to control women's sexuality and benefit from the privilege that they enjoy in a heteronormative society. When the importance of a discussion on consent was felt in India, we introduced the concept of no means no. But soon we realized that just saying no presumed that women are free and autonomous to say no in uncomfortable situations. But most women aren't taught how to say no and are in fact discouraged so as not to seem unaccommodating. Moreover, when Bollywood songs normalize perceptions like Uski na me bhi ha hai, what value does a woman's no even hold? That's when we said that consent is not just the absence of a no, but the presence of an active yes. The idea of affirmative consent was introduced, in which all parties are actively into whatever they're doing and seek the explicit, informed, ongoing and enthusiastic consent of each other, instead of just presuming that silence or absence of a no implies consent. There's also been some criticism around the affirmative consent standard. According to Section 375, Explanation 2 of the Criminal Law Amendment Act 2013, consent means an unequivocal voluntary agreement 
when the woman by words gestures or any form of verbal or non verbal communication communicates willingness to participate in the specific sexual act while this definition of consent is useful in prosecuting men who had sex with women non consensually including in cases where women fought back or submitted due to societal pressure it begs the question of whether an individual can ever possess complete capacity freedom and information to agree unequivocally to sex non consensual sex occurs across a continuum and chances are that most of us have at some point or another not acquired the explicit informed ongoing and enthusiastic consent of another when participating in sex because we have not been taught practical skills and tools around naming and respecting each other's boundaries actively listening to each other's desires and needs and navigating what triggers us especially when sex operates in so much silence and secrecy in our society we don't know how to communicate like that there's an interesting manner in which a mumbai based filmmaker parumita vora wrote about consent she said consent is not a tangible object it is an intangible response that formulates itself sometimes quickly sometimes slowly between these forbidding monoliths of yes and no is a real valley of consent where you have the time to exist in a maybe a time of making a choice whether to walk together a while to have sex to be in love or not to simply enjoy the erotic charge between you and others whatever it is you desire sexual interaction is a spectrum of shifting desires that crystallize from mm, maybe to yes absolutely or no not now not ever at a different pace in a different way for everyone respecting that choice expecting that choice is consent does a maybe have a place in the legal definition of consent what about instances when a woman is conflicted about going ahead with a sexual act changes her mind or is in two minds at the same time in these instances the affirmative consent standard would recast anything less than an unequivocal yes as a no it is also important to place consent within the framework of structural oppression and inequality not all of us are privileged with societal power and systems of oppression like sexism casteism homophobia transphobia racism ableism ensure that power doesn't rest with those inhabiting marginalized identities and so deepening our examination of consent involves understanding the many ways in which structural identities generate violence and as a result complicate our abilities to consent there has been a tendency to think that all sex exists in a binary that there is the good sex which is consensual and pleasurable and then there is the bad sex which is non consensual painful and not pleasurable which is then equated with rape and seen as the most dishonorable thing to happen to a woman but in reality sexual encounters are more ambiguous than that once we've acknowledged the complexity of consent we can move towards pursuing the affirmative consent standard with the knowledge that though sexual relationships don't always play out like that we can still strive to inculcate consent practices that are closest to it if we can't communicate our boundaries ask about someone else's boundaries and then make sure to respect them and not to violate them we can't expect to shift the culture we need to practice these skills enough times repeatedly until it becomes normal to ask for and give consent and to talk about sex contrary to what bollywood movies tell us disappointment after one faces rejection is a better price to pay and also creates a space to shift the culture to navigate consent without anyone feeling disrespected does that mean pursuing another person you're romantically attracted to has no place in a sexual interaction not necessarily as long as we are aware of our power relative to the people we are trying to pursue most parents wait to teach their children about consent uh, once they're old enough to engage in sexual behavior or don't have that conversation at all however inculcating consent practices should start much before that depending on their age and level of development children can be taught about personal space and that we don't enter another person's personal space if they aren't okay with it and likewise others shouldn't enter our personal space if we aren't okay with it 
Boundary setting is an important skill that can be spoken about with children, not just in the context of strangers, but also in the context of family members and friends. Additionally, we can discourage adults from encroaching on children's personal space without their permission. For example, pulling or kissing their cheeks, going for a hug, force feeding them and all of that. Normalizing the practice of seeking and giving consent would go a long way in making necessary shifts in how we enact intimacy in our relationships and in acknowledging and respecting the body autonomy of another person, whether they are your partner, a friend or a stranger. This video is part of a series of videos and learning content aimed at addressing gender-based violence. These videos provide practitioner perspectives by professionals and experts in the field. We hope these videos generate further discussions with peers, family members and teachers, encourage curiosity and seed further research ideas in these domains. We gratefully acknowledge the following for their support. Gaurav Krishna, Keshav Rajendran, Ishwar Shankar, Mohan Ram, Clockwork Captions, Enfold Consultants, Ford Foundation. The copyright and other intellectual property rights in respect of this video belong exclusively to Enfold Proactive Health Trust, Enfold. Enfold licenses this video under the terms of Creative Commons License, CC BY-NC-ND 4.0 the details of which can be found at https colon slash slash creative commons license dot org slash licenses slash by hyphen nc hyphen nd slash four dot zero slash any use or reproduction of this video contrary to or in violation of the terms of the aforesaid creative commons license will be illegal and enfold reserves the right to take suitable action in respect thereof Enfold also reserves the right to modify, terminate or revoke the license granted as aforesaid or otherwise exercise any and all rights in respect of its intellectual property without further notice and the same shall be binding on the licensee or user or reader thereof. June 2021 Enfold Proactive Health Trust www.enfoldindia.org Contact Info at enfoldindia.org plus 91 99 www.enfoldindia.org